Okay, uh, welcome to Designing Frame 007, Episode 1. Um, I'm going to go through the CAD for designing this frame. I figured this would be a good place to start. So here is a render of the frame. Just give it a little spin around and um, I figured I'd show where we begin, how we got there. So this is the geometry. We've got the just the crucial points on here. The purple lines are projected from another sketch. They're the fit data that I want. And then all the black lines are the crucial ones. And then all the dotted lines are just construction lines for various pieces, which just need to be there, which are helpful, like the wheels. So here we have the geometry. It's an endurance kind of touring -y road bike. But I still wanted to keep it very road. So we've got 420 mil chainstays, 610 mil front center, got a slightly longer fork because it is a richy gravel fork with a load of mounts on it. Um, but I tried to keep the trail down. You can see down there it's 58, 59 mil. Um, and yeah, it's not a great deal to say about the geometry. It's pretty standard 74 degree seat angle, 72 degree head tube angle and the rest of it is all just to fit the rider. So that's where we started. And then from there, I wanted to decide whether we do dropped or more standard seat stays. So I created two sketches, which you can see here. Um, and we went with dropped in the end. So that's as far as the standard seat stays got one little sketch. I then imported these two just wheel tire shapes to get a visual on them. And I knew I was going to use my stock roll wrapped top tube and down tube and bottom bracket. So they're coming in now. That's top tube, bottom bracket and down tube. They're all roll wrapped and I've used them for a previous frame. So I'm happy with the design of them. Everything else from here on is just designed for this frame. And I started with the dropouts because I wanted to use SRAM's universal derailleur hanger um, and I'll go into depth on those in a little bit um, but yeah so that's the chain stays the seat stays and then it gets into the lugs I've done them in three sections I've done the head tube lug the bottom bracket lug and the seat tube lug when I find it here there you go And there's a little hanger for the front derailleur. So zooming in a bit closer on things, we've got the chain stays, which weren't displaying quite correctly. So there you go, there's the actual tubes, the chain stay tubes. They're quite simple. They're straight, which makes them a little bit easier to mold and model and things. Um, but I think they balance out well with the frame. Here's a bit of a closer up view of the dropouts. They're relatively complex and relatively thick because the UDH standard is designed for mountain bike stuff. So you could have a bearing in there. Um, but I think I think they balance out pretty nicely. I was trying to show that I had it all matched up, but it's moved. So I'll go into that later. But yeah sits in nicely, balances out nicely and flows into the chain stays and we've got the flat mount on there. I'll dig into all of this in a little bit. So moving on to the chain stays, they are really quite simple. They're just a sort of Nice tapering move into the bottom bracket, giving space for the chain rings and the tire. That's a 700 by 32 I've modeled it around and I have inserted into this design various other tires to just have a look, but I think 32 is about where we're designing for. But I wanted to give some extra wiggle room in case we go a bit more than that. So the bottom bracket lug there, as you can see when I hovered over it, it all goes into the seat tube and joins in the middle. I'm intrigued to see how this will all play out, 
but um, it means I don't actually have to make a seat tube, which is cool. And because I'm molding using external stuff, it'll mean that's a 31.8. So if I decide to not go with this um, front derailleur like brazon style, I can just put a, uh, a patch in or a little plate in over where I was going to mount that. And we'll have a uh, spot where we can put a band clamp on. So this is the seat tube lug. And I was really happy with how it came out with the drop seat stays. Uh, I think it got it's got quite a nice flow to it. So I've turned off the lines so you can see that. Um, and you can see how it flows quite nicely into it and still looks pretty kind of neatly packaged and not too heavy or big or anything like that. And then up here, that little lip there is just so that this is a perfect 31.8 for the seat clamp to sit around um, and you can see the top tube there which I had the wrong model of that's actually the model of the mandrel so I'll change it there that's the proper top tube as modeled and see how it fit around the um, corresponding part in the head tube lug there and you can see how they're obviously far too long, but that's because the mandrel is designed like that. But I can just measure how much it goes in and mark it all up. And the down tube is much the same. It actually is bigger at the bottom than at the top. So it's uh, much like standard steel frame builders will overlies the tubes at the bottom. This is sort of wider at the bottom, which allows for it to come off the mandrel it gives a bit of extra strength at the bottom bracket and that's the head tube lug it'll have some inserts bonded in for the bearings later they're zero stack or integrated whatever you want to call them but that's not on this model because this model is starting to really slow my computer down so i'll go a bit in depth on the seat tube lug now i thought this would be a good example because it's got lots of different features going on so that's the final model of the seat tube lug and this is the the plug of it um, that's why it's modeled as solid and it has sort of five to ten mil extra on all of the sort of ends of the tubes so the inserts for the top tube and the seat stays and that, the bit on the top there and the bottom um, and I've separated it into two parts because my printer is not big enough to do this in one go and put some nice little pins in it so I can put it all together and those things will all be facing the right way and won't be all caddy wumpus. And then this was the process for actually making it into a mold. I'm trying out the Easy Composites toolcast stuff. Um, and so I needed to design around that. So what I've designed is basically half of the mold already. And then these walls so I can pour it in. And it's a three part mold. So you can see that the plug sits in there and then this little section, which I'm calling the gooch because it sits in between the two stays, whatever, um, just tucks in away in there and you can see how it all assembles with the plug that I'll have 3D printed, sand it all nice and smooth, put the walls on and pour the, uh, the goop in there and create a mold. I'm intrigued to see how it goes. It could be a lot less labor intensive than um, making one out of glass or carbon, or obviously it's far cheaper than machining one, but it's about the same price. So this section is probably gonna be quite long because I get a bit carried away, but um, this is the dropout design. So I'll start with the drive side dropout. And um, it's all done off of SRAM's nice UDH stuff, which I've wanted to spend a lot of time on because I think they've done something that a lot of manufacturers should be doing more of. They have provided really open, really clear CAD and drawings for every section of this and various examples. And ah, I'm just really impressed with it. Um, there are some things that I don't like about it, which I'll get into, but these bits here are just wonderful. Nice, clearly labeled, and you've got a nice line that you can ping things on. So this is all set up and jointed or however Fusion does things. It's not the 
program I was initially trained on, but it's all set in there so that um, it's all pulling off the geometry. Um, so I hide all of that extra stuff and get it back to where we were. So one thing I really like is that I included this model of the chain because in my first road frame that I designed, I actually put the seat stay joint to, uh, so it sort of started coming in too quickly and started interfering with the chain. So it's nice to see the chain on there. And that's the actual hanger modeled in. And it's it's rotated too far forwards because last time I was in this design, I was moving it around and left it in the wrong spot. But regardless. So to actually produce this part, I'm again using the toolcast stuff. Um, so I'll quickly press the play button here so you can you can see the process of how it was designed in fusion's little timeline thing which can be entertaining so i'll click play and you can see the sketches i made and the way i made all the bits and there we go that's how the part was made. These last bits here are how I made the parts for making the mold using the tool cast stuff again. Um, which this is this is where they that tool cast stuff really comes into its own, I think. This is something you couldn't lay up, obviously. So to design to design the mold, I made a base plate here. So, so I printed off the actual part, sanded it as smooth as I possibly could and checked all the fit of everything and then printed this base bit which it then sits into and then sanded that relatively smooth. That doesn't, that's not final surface, it just needs to release nicely. So I think I only sanded it to 400 or so but the actual part was polished, polished. I've got videos of me actually making it later so hopefully they'll all come across nicely. But yeah set it into there, released it and everything, put this wall around it and then poured all the gubbins in and created a mould. And then once that was all cured up, I flipped it over, turned it round, removed all the plastic and then poured in from the other side with the part still in there. And then I had my two sections of a mould and then I can create parts from it. The non-drive side dropout I plan to do much the same, and I did one uh, with the toolcast stuff, but found I didn't like the design, um, and it just wasn't working out. So this is the third revision. So the sketches and things are all a little messed up at this point. But um, this had a couple of tweaks. Mainly, I made the brake mount a lot shorter, and I made the that little indent. But one of the things with the UDH is that because it's so big and bulky. Um, where the, the way I'd usually design a pair of dropouts is is to try and make them nice and symmetrical, obviously. But to make them symmetrical for this, it gets sort of funky because the place where the sort of the lock nut, as it were, obviously things are different now. But the sort of wheel end cap is sitting, um, as I measured there, is three mil from the face of that, and then you've also got the entire thickness of the UDH and stuff to account for. So to make it all symmetrical, um, took a few tries and a bit of a learning curve, but they are actually nice and symmetrical now. And I'll show the measuring now. Um, well, that's the center line, so you can see where it sits. But with the measuring, you can see that this little hooded bit here, where the reel receives, is also three mil away from it, like on the other side, which just matches everything up. And these plates are 14 mil thick. Um, which was about as thin as I could go without it being a bit weird um, on the drive side. So I've got that little lip to hook into the drive side that you can see in the bottom right there. Um, and then I've got a nice little recess there which shortens up the rear axle and just hides the nut away, which I think I think should look nice. Um, so the non-drive side dropout obviously has a lot more going on with it. It's got the flat mount sort of holes and this is for flat mount 160 so no 140 mil possible but it means you don't have to use a 
adapter, an adapter for the 160s. And I, and I think for this rider and this setup, 160 front and rear is what we're going for. So it would be quite nice. Um, look a bit neater at the back end. Um, there are lighter ways to do this. This ended up weighing about 115, 120 grams for all of this. And I think I will investigate lighter ways of doing it. But for a first go at building full dropouts like these for myself, I thought I'd go with a slight bit of overbuilding. So this sketch, that's the bounding box that is specified in the Shimano manual. Um, I just left it on there as a construction thing so we could, so I could keep an eye on it to make sure I wasn't ever encroaching onto it as they recommend you shouldn't. Um, and then here again is the sketches. This time I've just done a 3D printed mold. Um, as I say, I did revision, so I just ended up doing a 3D printed mold. And if I like this design and like this process, I will actually make this out of the toolcast stuff because I've tried to make it so I can mold the brake mounts in to the whole assembly, which means I can lay the fibers nicely into that sort of area uh, rather than just sort of having to drill them out and causing something weird so here i'm showing a little draft analysis um still not entirely sure if i set it up correctly but um it always makes sense and seems to work because you've got a nice draft angle on most of it um on the outer bits and then even on the the flat bits it seems to be all right still not sure if i set it up properly but there we go. Here's a closer look at that brake mount area. So I have these pins which will be inserted about halfway through the layup and it means I can lay up the kind of outer bits of it with uni and everything. And then once I've got these pins in, I can then wrap around them and do stuff up the sides and all this sort of thing. And it just means it's molded around the brake mounts. Um, as, I, as I've just said, like, instead of having to cut through stuff and as well it's justified because i don't have a mill or any sort of any anything that i can fixture it with maybe in the future i'll design a way to cut them because it might work better but i'll see how this goes um and yeah see how it comes i might i'll probably still have to face them but hopefully the holes will all line up that's the plan and there's a little cut through just showing everything, leaving gaps all along the way so that um, resin can escape when I'm compressing it down. So that should hopefully be all the dropouts covered. So I hope that's been a nice look at what the plan is for this build and how I've designed it. Uh, I may refer back to a few bits later in the in the build, but I hope that's a pretty good overview. Um, I've probably got a few things wrong in this video. It's the first time I've done a voiceover for anything. Uh, I've watched it back already and now I have said a few things wrong. I called that a nut. It's not a nut, but whatever. Um, the next episode will probably be making some tubes. Um, I've got some footage of that which I'd like to show. So stay tuned for more and hopefully have some pretty fun to show at the end. Thanks for watching.